Dan, what's going on, man? You're looking good. Thanks for coming. That helmet's really shiny. You've been working on it, I can tell. I like it. Looks good. Today on Grand Thumb, we're gonna be talking about a really interesting weapon. A weapon banned almost throughout the entire galaxy. Now, we are in Vandor right now, probably the only place that we can actually do this video, right, Micah? Like, oh, yeah, yeah dude, yeah. literally nowhere else. So, last time we talked about the DL44, a really cool weapon that is banned in the Core Worlds. And uh, again, if you live in the Core Worlds, like Coruscant, ban the Poodoo, for real. Um, but the weapon that we're talking about today is it hasn't been manufactured for, well, at least for civilians, for thousands of years. It was used for a short time by the uh, Empire. Of course, uh, in my time with the Imperial Navy, I never got to use it. And today we're in for a real treat. We do have a local mercenary, Din Djarin. They're just coming in. Uh, good to see you. It's good to see you again. So we do have an actual disruptor rifle. Uh, these haven't been made for thousands of years. These are pretty rare, aren't they? But this particular rifle has been specifically customized for your personal needs, right? So today we're gonna to be talking a lot about this rifle, what makes it good, what makes it bad, and uh, we were lucky enough to be able to get our hands on some of the ammunition for it because it is quite rare. So I'm very excited to do a entire video and breakdown on this disruptor rifle, a real treat. Hey, are we okay to film this? Like, will the New Republic see it? Dude, the New Republic for one. First off, so after, I first off, one, I'm not in that stupid clemency program. Uh, I retired out of the Imperial Navy, and my disability claims still haven't transfer, transferred over to the New Republic. They are complete, I would say they're worse than the Empire, to be honest. But before we get into that, we of course have to thank all the sponsors of this channel. If you're looking for a degree in galactic gunsmithing, the Sonoran Desert Institute is the way to go to. We can't thank them enough for sponsoring the channel, allowing us to get this message out to the entire galaxy. Go and check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. Of course, we have what, Micah? Uh, primary arms. Yep, if you need uh, to. I don't know if they ever made disruptors or. or no, them. no, they can't. But what they did make was optics for the DL44. I haven't gotten it yet, but once it's here, it's gonna be a good time. So we have to thank Primary Arms, awesome optics, great price. Go and check them out. And of course, we can't forget save your equipment. If you want to make your life around uh, some unknown camouflages that really don't work with today's thermal imaging, they are the people to go to. But really cool bags, right? Awesome. We like them. Yeah, we like I them. Now, unlike the camera that this is filmed on, the hollow projectors that you are watching this on, AAC Ammo is proudly made in Naboo. Go and support them. We, being my home planet, I'm very partial to it. Go and check them out. We can't thank them enough for sponsoring the channel, for the uh, ammunition for this channel. And uh, yeah, they're just good people. We like them, right, Micah? We love them. Yeah, we love them. A big thank you to them. But as we always say, talk is cheap. Blaster ionized energy is actually really cheap. But let's disrupt your energy. Pause aren't so. Let's get into it. So a lot of you might not be familiar with precisely what a disruptor rifle is. They're actually very interesting weapons. Now, in the case of this one, they are very powerful weapons, and we'll explain how. But they are single shot, so they are loaded one at a time. Um, and what's really interesting about this weapon is that like compared to a lot of the sniper rifles that we used um, in the Imperial Navy, such as the DLT-19X or the T-21, which have pretty substantial recoil, the, um, the disruptor rifle that we have right here, the Amban, uh, is fairly mild, which was really surprising. And I, I suppose that's offset by the fact that the ammunition is so hard to get because it's just, I don't know of any current factories that are making it. Now, with a disruptor rifle, they are very different from a blaster rifle. A disruptor rifle actually will break the molecular bonds between atoms in your body. 
So technically it is a very clean death. So if you if it does strike your organic matter in any way, you are vaporized. Now, the problem and the reason that they were actually banned is that it was discovered, there's a couple um, empathic species in the galaxy. Um, when they were in touch with these people who were vaporized, what happens is due to the fact that all of your molecules break apart at roughly the same time, the physiological response and the psychological response of you is actually not what is expected. It does actually feel like hours while you're being vaporized. So this is actually known to be one of the most painful deaths outside of the Sarlacc pit, as far as I'm known. Does that check? So if you haven't seen a disruptor rifle in use, what we're gonna do right here is we have this organic gel block made from organic matter. We're gonna shoot it with an actual disruptor round and we're gonna see what's gonna happen. I, uh, I am excited. All right, we're gonna go ahead and load up our disruptor round and we are good to go. Mike, are you ready? Let's go. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I guess we kind of should have thought, thought about that one a little better. It huh? just, uh, it was there. <laughs> then it wasn't you knew there. That was going to happen, didn't you? <laughs> he knew, he knew. <laughs> he's, he's a funny guy. And that is the reason that disruptor rifles are banned because, um, it's just a little intense. You know what I'm saying, Mike? I, like, I would rather use a blaster. I, I would rather be just hit and done. Yeah. Yeah, you know, hours of suffering just seems pretty intense. You know, it, in action, it doesn't seem like that because, again, you are vaporized in a second. So it is actually a very interesting rifle. Now, um, Din's rifle is very interesting. It is specifically uh, tailored to him. Now, being a bounty hunter, um, a lot of his subjects don't always have, to, there's a lot of misconceptions about bounty hunters. You know, he does agree with me on that. It's not all death, it's not all killing. A lot of it is actually taking in live prisoners. So when we go to the muzzle on this, we're gonna go tip to butt, just like my uh, Imperial Navy guys like. So basically what we have right here is a Bantha Pro... Din, Din, whoa, look, oh! Get him, get him, get him! Um, what we have here is essentially a Bantha Prod, if you're familiar with that. It is a very strong, stunning device. Uh, you could call this a bayonet if we're talking about really old terms, but it's going to stun any number of most species that you see throughout the galaxy. So that's gonna allow our boy right here to take anybody in that he needs, and it is very effective. Now, um, we're not gonna demonstrate in anybody because it's very painful and I'm not about that life. But uh, a very interesting, you know, kind of addition to this particular rifle and one that you wouldn't typically see, but again, it does fit with what our boy is doing right here. Now, going down to the barrel, you'll notice that the barrel is quite long. And the reason isn't for any type of um, acceleration technology for the ionization of the gases or anything like that. It's actually for the projectile itself. This is a projectile-based weapon. Um, and if you're not familiar with, with what that is, that's okay. Um, uh, beyond this, the only other projectile weapon that we've seen on this channel was the uh, Tuscan Cycler rifle, if you remember that, oh, Micah. Yeah. yeah. So it's actually slow... Um, throwing a slug by whether it be chemical means or some other. So the barrel is actually rifled and that's for the phased disruptor slug that is traveling down it. Now this rifle is incredibly, incredibly accurate. I've seen shots out to 2000 meters with, with uh, this particular rifle, which you can't talk about today, but it is a superbly accurate weapon. Now, if you come down here, there might be a question of what this guy is right here. Um, on projectile-based weapons, you do need to tune the barrel. There is a little bit of flex in the barrel as a projectile travels down them. This is to tune that to make sure that the projectile is going to be true as it flies through the air. I know it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it is like throwing a rock. So you have to make sure that that is tuned. There's a little bit of harmonics that comes into play when you have metal on metal contact, especially with as fast as this guy is going right here. If we move back from there, we do have this optic right here. The optic is really interesting because, um, am I able to talk about this? Is that okay? I don't think he minds. So the optic actually is linked in through his visor. Sorry. This is old Mandalorian armor. He claims to be Mandalorian. They're gone, so I don't think it's real. But uh, it, it allows him to see a lot of things. So this particular optic does work off of a sonic frequency as well as thermal. So it can actually see through walls. It can see thermal patterns and it is also ranging at the same time. Now, if you don't have the Lincolns through helmets or some type of visual software, then you're not going to see that. Uh, and you're just gonna see basically a reticle with uh, ranging and it's going to give you a targeting solution. So essentially, 
because you do have a slug, um, you do have some deviation compared to ionized energy as it flies through the air. So it is a little bit different for my guys who've, you know, have all this training on blaster technology. Are you tracking this, Mike? I know it's a little confusing. It is, I just, it's such kind of a ancient way of doing things. You know, ancient, yes, but again, uh, you take a blaster shot to the arm, you're okay, you take a blast, or you take a, a disruptor shot to the arm, you vaporize. So there is some, some good that does come out of this technology. Good being a relative term, right? Now, if we come over to here, there's a question, you might be familiar with this from, uh, my, from guys who have served with like the E11. Um, these are basically just to ensure that we have radiation of the heat. There's a lot of heat that's built up off this rifle. Again, I, I don't believe that you'd be able to run this thing semi-automatic in any way due to the fact of, of heat. Even with a DL44, um, you wanna be careful to ensure that you don't uh, fire too much and heat the gun up. Uh, and that's definitely true of a disruptor rifle. Uh, there's a lot of cool down time when it comes to the sky. Okay, so uh, Din has like a little companion with him that he's been like trying to hide, but it's like this little cute green guy. So anyhow, we have a printer on our, <laughs> on our ship. So we actually printed like a big costume of it. Do you think he's gonna think it's funny? Uh, dude, I don't know how he's gonna react. I to think it. he's gonna love it. Uh, are you sure? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna okay. try it. Hey Din, so we wanted to have a surprise for you. So like we printed out, maybe <laughs> look, he's out. <laughs> Now, if we come back, you'll see the latch right here. So that's how we're loading the projectiles. Can you show him one of the projectiles, Din? And he has, um, I would say, on him at any time. Okay, we won't get into that. Point is, we have quite a few of them, um, and we do have to you know, thank our sponsors for that. But it is an interesting system. After we've done that, we do have to bring the hammer back, and the hammer is to uh, ignite the projectile and get it traveling down the barrel. Now, this is, of course, customized, so we do have this sling right here, and that is for, you want to show them how that works? It is the link directly onto his armor so that it can be held, and if you come around to the back right here, we're not showing too much, a lot of NDA stuff, and then he is able to keep it captured on his back right there as he travels. So that is the purpose of the strap. Again, that is a very kind of specific customized option when it comes to this particular rifle. Um, the stock is fitted to him. We have a deep um, scoop right here to ensure that his helmet can fit under. And then of course, the stock is contoured to fit in between his armor right there. So that is the Amban rifle. Um, really interesting. Michael, what did you think about shooting this thing? It was a wild time. I think I expected a little more, a little more buck out of yeah. it, but it was tame. It, it's very tame. Um, and I think that's the best thing we could say about it. What you have with the Amban, is you have a very tame rifle that has a lot of power through it. Um, of course, if we could all you know, have these, if we could use these consistently, that'd be awesome. But again, this is a very, what's the word for it? It's a weapon that you only wanna use on special occasions. The ammunition is no longer being produced. So what you have and what you can get your hands on is what you have. This is definitely for when you face really intense foes like what, Jawas, something like that. <laughs> he didn't think that was funny at all. The point is, we appreciate you coming out and letting us uh, get hands-on time with this guy. The scope can also detach. I know that you can use it for ranging or for getting PID on targets, right? So that works as well. A really versatile rifle, a very uh, purpose-built rifle, and uh, a real treat to look at today. All right, guys, thank you for joining us today. Obviously, we always have a good time with April Fools. And um, this is a project that we've been working on for what, Micah? A really a long time and a lot. A lot. Patreon dollars. A lot of Patreon dollars. A lot of Patreon bucks to get this built. This is, of course, a fully functioning rifle. This is built off of a 1873 that was already mangled, and we had this custom made. Um, a lot of the parts we had, of course, custom fabricated in CNC machines, like the tuning fork, down to all the parts. The and uh, of course the rifle itself was built out by the good people at Stockpile Defense. You wanna come on in here? The stock uh, was originally cracked. We replaced the stock with a laminated one. Only has to go up to the action to really mimic what we're doing here. But this was all a solid piece of wood, essentially, right here. Everything was inleted so that it would fit pretty much a one-to-one -one on the side lock, the trigger, and the action itself. After everything was inleted, it was bedded so that it was a nice tight fit. If you took all these screws out, it would still hold itself in. What about the optic? Where, where, where was that from again? It's a original old Weaver optic. It's not variable power or anything. Yeah, it's, but just, it's just like a fixed 2.5 is what it feels like, or 2.2. Yeah, it's something like that. It's pretty cool though. I mean, this is pretty movie freaking accurate. How much time did you spend on this? Uh, 
too I spent much, yeah, too much uh, time. In total, is over 36 hours in fitting everything, and most of that was just down the woodwork. It's pretty sick, man. Yo, previous April Fools' videos, Micah, like we've done it, but it's been non-firing, right? This is we decided to go hard. Yeah, we wanted to have a firing replica. And we wanted to do something that we hadn't really seen before, which was the Amban rifle. All right, guys, we are here on the range and we are ready to actually shoot. Uh, that's not a Jawa. To be clear, Din really does not like Jawas at all. Yeah, yeah. Well, not anymore. The Empire kicked me out because I refused their exper experimental uh, Metachlorian shot. So I've just been on Vandor kind of scavenging for the family now. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I had to get it because uh, at the time I was in the uh, Imperial Navy. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was seeing a bunch of Ewoks just drop dead. So I yeah, it was pretty stupid, dude. To be honest, like, um, I was just retiring at the time and I still had to get it. <laughs> yeah, so stupid, dude. Like, what's, so what's the point, goodness. right? What do you think about that? <laughs> you look so nervous, Charles. No. Why? For, for the Republic. Let's get it. Let's get it. For the Republic, dude. <laughs> the New Republic. Okay. Oh, I've never fired a disruptor rifle. It's going to be one cock, two. We can open that up. Uh, can I get around? And then uh, once you have it loaded, uh, pull cock. Okay, are we ready? Yeah. We actually doing this? We're doing it. Great. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> First shot of the disruptor. Dude, that was not as bad as I thought it would be. All right, you ready for this? Okay, second cock position. <laughs> oh, one round one? Yeah, I can do that for sure. There might be times when you need to like smoke two jaws at once, right? Right, Charles? Oh uh, yeah. All right, so we'll do like the old handy method. I'll just have one in my mouth ready to fire. You know, just load okay. it. Yep. One round one. Okay. Here we go. Okay, I'll go. Then Charles. I don't think Din will shoot on camera. Why is he? Why is he not talking? He doesn't talk. Though. That's like his thing. All right, ready. He thinks he's a Mandalorian. Okay. Is he a mute? No, no, he'll talk. All right. You ready for this? Yep. Oh, come on. Not uh, bad. Not bad. Great hit. I would say that's pretty good. Yeah. Did you know we've actually worked together before? Really? Yeah, back when I worked for the uh, Imperial Navy. This guy's a killer. To be clear, Charles has never served in the Empire. It's stolen Empire, dude. All right, you ready? Yeah, let's go. Do you even have, do you have rounds for this? Okay, here we go. He's not a Jawa, he has a Jawa robe. By the way, why is that Jawa robe so big? Yeah, I don't know why you guys, I don't know why you guys just can't be inclusive towards Jawas nowadays. Okay, it's 5,037. Let's get up to it. Oh, you gotta lift that little guy. Okay. Yeah, are you, oh, are it's you ready? Cocked. It's already cocked. Have you fired a disruptor rifle before, Charles? No, this is my first time. Are good at this. I tell you. He's kind of got it. What's up, yeah. dude? Hold on. Have you fired a projectile rifle before? I fired some type of load the other night. Quick note, that helmet that he has, dime a dozen. You can actually buy them at surplus stores. He says he's a Mandalorian. There are no Mandalorians. They've been gone for like a thousand years. So, this guy's a LARPer. I think he's actually a professional LARPer. <laughs> All right, we have Din firing the disruptor rifle. Um, I personally witnessed him maybe murdering people with it. On you. Okay, shooter, are you ready? Stand by. Up! See, if he had in his mouth, if he didn't have the helmet yeah, on. Yeah, that was pretty bad It's a call. thing. I want to be very clear, too, that he will not take the helmet off. It's super weird. Like, how does he, how does he eat? So we don't have the targeting software that Din has in his helmet. However, I'm pretty sure we can make some short shots on it, right, Charles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we can. We're gonna we're gonna see if we can get this uh, zeroed in for these these native Vandorians. Tuscan Raiders make shots at well beyond a thousand meters with slug rifles. I'm pretty sure we can do it, right, Micah? Let's do it. What is okay. this? Like uh, uh like one one eighty? One eighty? Yeah. Here you go, buddy. Oh yeah. Oh, you ready? Okay. Did you steal from Din? Yeah, <laughs> he's a little bitch. <laughs> he's gonna kill you, dude. Yeah, whatever. <sighs> Dan, your shoulder's so weird, bro. Low left. <laughs> I think the barrel shot out. 
You can't shoot out a disruptor rifle's barrel, dude. I don't know, there's a lot of chemicals going through that. <sighs> Yo, this guy's giving me Dahmer vibes. Okay, you think I can make the shot? Yeah. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> barrel's not shot out, I guess. So. <laughs> one R1, one, one R1. One. Beep! Oh, now you want Yeah, yeah, you're gonna hand it to me. My helpful little Jawa. <laughs> that was weird. Ah, oh, just left. I'll take it, that's pretty good. Not bad, right? Perfectly in line, uh, half target above the head. Beep. Just right, barely. I know, disruptor rifles, right? Hey! Let's go! <laughs> it's good. Like, well, it's it's made for the uh, for that armor he wears. Like, you can see like how it fits right in between there. It makes sense. I I get it. Just for us, that's a no go, dude. Oh, that's a tense din. Oh yeah. <laughs> Are you ready, Kenny? Is it loaded? No, I don't think you're loaded. You want me to load it for you? Yeah, it's okay. Can't you can't see. <laughs> we we. We, we didn't print this well, to be clear. It was kind of last minute. All right, let's see it. Where was it? Reload, reload, reload. R1. No, 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 okay. It's like a... He can't see what he's doing. <laughs> okay, aim, aim slightly <laughs> right. <laughs> aim, no, aim right. Okay, aim up. Okay, you got it. Oh, thank God. That would have been so embarrassing if he hit it. <laughs> that would have been. So we have a fired case right here, so we can show you guys uh, how we can ghost that trigger right there. So get that dummy cartridge in there. Pull the hammer back. As you can see, for the first time ever, we're going to ghost the M-band trigger. So fill it onto that. Not bad. It's like a six pound pull. Ready? Yep. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, there's actually, it's like no, there's no take up. It's just you immediately hit the wall and then you let off on it. And uh, of course, our engineer Christian is absolutely obsessed with uh, the uh, Mandalorian, as you can, as you can tell. Uh, Christian, you, I mean, you can talk now. Hold on, let me let me get this mic up to you. Um, how much? How excited are you to be able to uh, have like this replica that you were able to hold and attach to your kit? <laughs> Pretty stoked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty stoked. So you made this yourself, right? Yeah. This is all custom kit that Christian made. This is Christian's yeah. like passion project right is here. Is it, could it go up from here for you? This is your whole life in the making. No, I'm in the movies now. You can die, yeah. right? Yeah, I could die, happy. Yeah. Christian's actually like really, really smart. So I know this is really fun for him. So we wanna just like make a wish foundation right here. <laughs> this is why we hired an engineer. Hey, how guys, um, we really appreciate you. We like doing fun little projects like this. Um, we're always just trying to have fun, right, Micah? Yes. Trying to have a good like, time. I literally can't thank Patreons enough for how, like, yeah. this was not cheap. No, it was not at all. And we do definitely have to thank um, Lyman. So Lyman actually hand-loaded cartridges specific to the 1873 just for this video. So that was super cool of them. Um, they actually they actually flew out on a plane to deliver it to us on time. So we really do have to thank all the people who supported this, Stockpile Defense, our Patreon, um, Lyman. Uh, just good people who were able to bring something really cool to you guys for free, which is you know, what we try to do. Except for those who pay. Except for those who, uh, <laughs> except for the Patreon. But anyhow, guys, uh, no big lessons or anything at the end. Have fun sometimes. That's all that matters. And uh, you know what? Dad advice for today is go spend time with the family. Uh, they're what really matters. Not uh, not YouTube, not video games, not anything else. And uh, yeah, we love you guys, and we'll see you guys soon.